Hey guys, this is Dylan again with Jobbers Technology Solutions. I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Um, so I said I was going to make some videos, but now I got busy. Um, my last video I made was about VPNs, and that was relatively quick. Uh, today I'm going to make another video for OpenSense. Uh, as everybody can tell, I'm a huge fan of OpenSense or PFSense open source firewall. You can use it um, you know, for, with a free license or you can get a business license. Uh, there's just there's a lot of integrations and a lot of uh, configurations you can do with this guy so that's one reason why I like it uh, today I'm going to do a quick video on uh, on what was it uh, Sensei which is a application based integration for the firewall um, and there's two ways to do it and I'm going to go through uh, well I'm not going to go through both ways but I'm going to show you one way and then do the other uh, so I'm going to jump straight into it and uh, if you want to go check out uh, Sensei more you can go to this webpage right here and uh, this uh, tells you how to install it, and then if you want to go to the other one about the actual firewall itself or the actual integration itself, then you can go to this URL and it will tell you more about it. But anyway, if you want to explore that, go for it. And right here, I'm going to actually go through the installation. So, the first way that I, no I normally do it is that you would normally uh, SSH into the firewall and then you would run this command. And this basically curls down uh, the Sensei application and installs it for you through the command line. So normally, the way I would do it is uh, actually I need to navigate to the web page. Here we go. All right. So in order to do it through SSH, you're going to want to go down to System, and then Settings and then Administration. And then I would never leave this as default, but this is just this is a lab, so I'm, I'm going to do it as a lab. So you would do uh, enable secure shell, permit root user login, permit, permit password login, and hit save. So if you're using Linux, you can SSH directly through uh, the terminal. If you, if you have Windows, I usually use TerraTerm. But anyway, so I would go to terminal, and then do I would do SSH root, or whatever user account might be. And then I would navigate to the actual IP address. Alright, so this is going to bring up all the options for your firewall itself. And normally you would hit number 8, which is the shell. And then um, drag this over here. And then you would go back to that web page I was talking about. You would copy this. Make sure you get the whole thing copy this, go back to your terminal, and this is where you would paste it in and then hit enter, so <laughs> it went ahead and took my actual command, so it's going to install it this way. And then once this finishes, I'll refresh the web page and show you where you set it up at, but I'll also go back and I'll show you through the uh, web GUI how you can do it that way too. So this might take just a minute. Oh, okay, that was actually pretty quick. Alright, so after you do it through the command line, if you decide to do it that way, Make sure you exit out of this, hit close terminal, and then make sure you go back to your administration and then turn off that uh, access to SSH. And, I, and I'll say this as well so, being in security, I would absolutely make sure SSH is turned off or changed to a different uh, port besides 22. Uh, all around the world, 22 is constantly getting hit by you know, you know, any means that an adversary can think of. So change your port and, and that you know that's what we call it, um, security to obscurity and so that's not always the best thing to do either but that's better than nothing so just either disable SSH altogether until you need it for admin purposes or secure it as best as possible through strong encryption uh, strong passwords or uh, you know a different port so that, that's just my little opinion on that anyway so go back down here and hit save and then what you're going to see here is once you hit um, hit the refresh button at some point, you're going to see Sensei down here. So before I go through and configure it, I'm going to go back up and do show you the GUI way. So the other way is if you first log into your uh, firewall, you hit System, Firmware, and then Plugins. All right, so these guys are already up here. You have the OS Sensei, the Sensei Updater, and then the Sunny Valley. So normally these guys are down somewhere on the bottom of the list or near the bottom of the list, and they won't. They'll have a plus mark next, uh, next to it like that. So what I normally do is I hit Control F, and then I you see down here in the bottom left hand corner of my screen it says Sensei, 
I was already looking for it at some point. And uh, that way you can hit the down arrow and it'll highlight it. So just make sure all three of these are added in under the uh, under the plugins. And once you do that and then you refresh the web page, uh, the Sensei thing will come up, come up down here anyway. Alright, so moving on. Sensei is right here and then you just go down to configuration. And this will walk you through step by step. So just go ahead and there's the welcome message. Here's all their um, documentation as far as what it is and what it does and what um, what all it entails. You can you can use the free version or you can pay for it. You know subscription fees and whatnot. Anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna skip through all that right now. Please read through it if you if you're doing this for business or if you're doing this and if for some reason it would require a license or a subscription. Please read that and make sure you follow it. So you're going to hit I agree, let's get going. Alright, and the first thing you're going to do is check your hardware to make sure everything's up to par because it requires at least uh, 4 gigs or more to operate. Um, if you have like uh, like what they normally do with like 4096 megabytes, it will function that way. Uh, it just has to optimize it for that amount. Usually with OpenSense I do 8 gigs of RAM, uh, that way you don't have to run into any of these issues. Give that just a second to run and we'll be good to go. Alright, so here's a perfect example. So I'm right at 4096, so it says um, we have detected low in hardware. And this is a virtual firewall, so I could add more, but for this I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, so it says no worries since it will offer an optimum configuration for you. In this case, just go ahead and hit next. And then you can use, install a local uh, Manga, I can't even pronounce that, I never have been able to, uh, Manga B, something like that, database or use a remote last search database. So right now I'm just going to do the local install. So install and proceed. This is going to take just a moment. While this is loading, I'm just going to say that I, I've been preaching about OpenSense you know, for a little while now, but I, I love open source software. I love the, build, the fact that you can, you can download um, CentOS or Ubuntu you know, load it onto some hardware that you have, a suitable hardware at least, and then you can take another you know, open source platform, for example, your backup. Uh, you can take your backup and you can just integrate it into your server, and then bam, you have backups rolling. So that you know, people talk about you know, support and all this other jazz all the time. Well, if you learn how to do open source, or you know, if you learn Linux-based platforms, then the sky's the limit. And then that's what I'll say about that. So, all right, so this just got done hit next alright so here's the fun part so this is a virtual firewall again uh, so it does have the ability to do um, the interface that it has has the ability to use be used with um, Sensei but there if you don't have a compatible NIC it may or may not work in the past I have used the uh, USB to Ethernet adapters um, that since you don't you might not have a, a dual NIC card you know by you know by factory on your computer and so uh, just keep that in mind. You need, to, you need to make sure you have a compatible NIC card so that it can do what it needs to do. In this case, uh, my land line, my land side works. And by by the way, I, I just I leave it on routed mode because it's, it's, it's experimental. I haven't messed with that yet. Uh, just keep that in mind. So I'll, I keep it on routed mode. So go ahead and click the over arrow on that, and then hit next. All right, this is reaching out to uh, what they call the cloud reputation and web categorization. So I leave all this to default. And just scroll on down. And hit next. All right, so the TCP service password. You can leave it the same. I wouldn't recommend it. Anything that's default, I normally change to what I want it to be. So uh, right here, everybody's favorite thing. I'm going to put password in there. This is a lab. This is the only time I would do this. All right, so hide that again, and then just copy paste that. Hit next. All right, and then you can choose this new option that I've seen they, that they've added in there. Scroll on down. All the stuff's checked off. All right, so again, if you're if this is just a home. Uh, type setup, then you can just do the max 15 devices. If you're like me and you have like 30 devices at your house, then you can add more. Um, 
right now I'm just going to go ahead and do the 50. Hit next. And then you can add, again, you can add your email in here. Um, you don't have to. Um, since I've done this a zillion times, I really don't have an email to put in there. So I'm just going to hit, that, hit finish. Alright, so this is going to run through. This is going to start everything up. This is going to get you flowing. And once this finishes, I'll go back through and show you the uh, web controls and the app controls and the security on the side right there. Alright, bam, hit refresh. And then it's going to start everything up. And then you hit dismiss, dismiss. Alright, so this is showing your status. So just keep all this stuff in mind whenever you're running it. If, if you, um, excuse me, if you have an issue with connecting out because remember that uh, Sensei is watching the LAN side so anything that's basically leaving your internal network going out is what Sensei is looking at so if that's the case if you have an issue with connecting out if you because uh, sometimes Sensei sees a first se uh, firstly seen website as malicious or what, whatever you want to call it so uh, if you have an issue like that hit enter bypass mode and it will bypass it temporarily all right and then so uh, go down here to web controls alright so depending on what your licensing is you can change this usually I leave it permissive um, unless you're in an environment where you don't want just you know random things going on, running amok then you can change it to moderate control and as you can see it just says block adult advertisement ad trackers you know uh, hate violence illegal illegal drugs that kind of it'll, it'll start blocking those things uh, high control is well you can see it gets way more restrictive as to what you can actually uh, what website you can go to if you want to do custom that's whenever it's going to say hey you need a premium subscription right here so just keep that in mind I'm gonna leave mine permissive for now app controls uh, same same general thing you can go through here and you can make it more custom if you want to um, since that's similar to web controls I'm just gonna leave it default alright security so here's another thing so for the essential security all this stuff you can turn on for the advanced security you're going to need a subscription or upgrade to premium or um, you know do that instead so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to check off all these and hit save changes and they've got some pretty cool stuff on the advanced side too but again lab I don't need it right now All right, so your um, reports and your uh, your reports and your dashboard are similar. Um, with dashboards, it, it just basically shows you a category and it tells you the um, IPs or you know URLs or whatever. Um, let's go back up here. So up here, you can refresh reports. You can tell it to refresh every so often. You can look at the the last you know the the period of time that you want. Uh, you can look at the reporting criteria so that's under uh, under dashboards under reports you can actually look at your connections or you can go over to blocks right now it hasn't blocked anything or you can do web or you know basically DNS or TLS so you can you can look at this stuff a little more granularly with the actual reports side and I, I'm gonna tell you with my experience with this um, if something so for example if you go to uh, play on steam for example so uh, I play halo on steam um, if you have something reaching out like that then uh, then since they might see it as bad and it will block it and I'll tell you that in which case that happens go to blocks and then go to live block sessions right now it's not showing anything but it will show you your computer your gaming computer whatever you might have it will show you the IP and it will show you this reaching out to a halo server or whatever if that's the case over here in the actions you'll see where it's blocking it you just click on that block or um, you know whatever symbol it's showing and then you'll uh, it'll pop up another box that says allow this particular IP or allow this category so if things get blocked you can enter bypass mode uh, to, to allow it through and or you can come to the box and just allow it through altogether so that way you don't have that way you don't have to enter bypass mode so just keep that in mind whenever if you decide to install this and run this and last but not least is status. So status is going to show you everything about what's going on with Sensei. And then every so often you want to come over here and check updates or reload. 
or whatever you need to do with it. And again, bypass mode. You know, stop, restart if you're having problems with it. Basic troubleshooting stuff. And then all, and the very last thing I'll say about it is under, under configuration, I've had it where the dashboards have disappeared for whatever reason. Um, I don't particularly know why they did, but they they may or may not do that in that in that case. You'll lo you will lose um, the logs that you've already had, but I've had to stop the since they pack engine, then they reset the factory defaults to get all my dashboards back. So uh, just keep that in mind um, for whenever you decide to do this, if you decide to do this. But anyway, guys, uh, I meant for this to be a little bit shorter, but I wanted to make sure everybody understood what this is and how it works and why it does what it does. So, guys, if y'all like the video, please like it, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate every bit of support I get. Uh, I'm hoping to push this out and other other security practices out to uh, customers or whoever might need it. Um, if y'all need any help, please reach out to me. Anyway, thanks, guys. Y'all have a good day, and thank you.